All right. So now I'm going to get on with the lesson. Uh, a few weeks ago, I dealt with this topic. The name of this topic is called We Are Not a Hate Group. Okay. Now, I dealt with the first part of that in Raleigh. That's one, that one is up on video now. So I'm doing part two. So part one, I'm, I was glad to have put the uh, subtitle on it. I think Captain Josiah, one of y'all, you were very well. Y'all uh, gave me the, gave the idea to, uh, to put the subtitle up under that. We are not a hate group. And then underneath it was honor thy father and thy mother. Because that particular section of the class dealt with the children. Dealt with uh, the children in relation to this uh, mothers and fathers. Uh, honoring thy father and thy mother. And when we don't have these things, a, a whole level of, of, of evils will come into the family through the children and bring up and bring to realization the terrible uh, statistics that we constantly see. Okay? You see the, our kids going to, getting caught up in drugs, early pregnancies, uh, uh, murder, rape, you name it, our children go into it because the, the family structure of Israel has been broken. Because the ability us for us to, to 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 teach our children the proper ways of the Most High has been broken. There's been an enemy that intercepted that, that sep that that severed the relationship between the children and the parents, especially those who are trying to do right by this Bible. So that first uh, portion of this class, we are not a hate group, was geared to that. But now, I'm moving on with the second part of this title. Okay, we are not a hate group. And what I got here, hold on now, <laughs> we are not a hate group. So how do we defeat that popular persuasion? That's the second part of this. There's a popular persuasion that tries to uh, sh uh, shunt us into the false labeling of us being a hate group. So I'm going to talk about that in this lesson here. Okay, so that's the, that's the uh, subtitle of this uh class okay so this is this week's here now but the first thing i want to do before i get into the class i want to talk about the specialty of israel and when i say the specialty of israel um i'm not just talking about us as bishops us as deacons us as captains officers uh soldiers and even the brothers i'm talking about sisters i'm talking about families i'm talking about all of you who God has called. And I want you to understand within the first few minutes of this class, I want to I want to I want to dwell on the importance of you. Okay? I talked you y'all seen what happened at Passover. Brothers was risen up. Brothers uh was given ranks and things of that nature. And sometimes people can forget that well say okay, leadership such and such, and then they'll leave themselves out. No, all of you, all of you are special to the most. I'm going to read that out of the Bible, okay? I, I want to start off with that. Give me the book of Revelation 12 and 1, okay? Revelation 12 and 1. I also want to give, uh, I want to say this here, I'm going to give a big shout to Captain Akar. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that. I watched this class this morning. How many of y'all saw this class this morning? I can't. Can I get a witness? The class that he did this morning on leadership, I sat back and I watched it, and that class was excellent. Okay? And I was glad. And, and also, Eli came in with the information to back it up. So that was a very, and, I'm, and from what I understand, that class went all over. That was live all over. So that's, that's, the, kind of, that's the kind of work we want to get done in Israel. It's time to get things up and moving. And that's what I'm here to do by the power and the grace of the Most High. So. Uh, just once again, all praise to the Most High. Excellent class, Captain. Really, really. Okay, that's going to go far. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 and 1, talking about the, special, the specialness of you brothers and sisters, all of you. Okay? Read. Revelations. Uh, yes, sir. Chapter 12 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Now, this, we're in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, and we're reading verse 1. And it says, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Heaven is talking about in the kingdom. Give me Matthew. I ain't going to go through too many precepts for this part. We'll get to the precepts a little heavier later on. Matthew 11, I think it is. 
let's pinpoint what this is talking about here for those of us that may not be thinking about it. Uh, Revelation, I mean, Matthew 11 and 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Because what we're dealing with now is this part that speaks about heaven, a wonder in heaven. Read. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. You got some people that are saying John the Baptist is wicked. I've heard that from camps. You, you know we're in the end times now. This man was the forerunner of the Christ. How in the world he could be wicked? But you know what? Give it, where's, the, where's the verse that says that they call him a devil? Uh, 11, 18, right? Read that. I'm not Matthew chapter it. 11, verse 18. We're going to jump because I just want to deal with that part there, just because that statement was being said. For John came neither eating nor drinking. John the, John the Baptist did not come eating meat and drinking wine because he had taken a vow of a Nazareth. Read. And they say he hath a devil. They say he has a devil. They say this man is a demon. What is the people that is talking about? This is talking about Israelites that was calling them that. To call this man wicked, to call him the devil, that's the kind of spirits that we're dealing with today. You're going to call John the Baptist a, a wicked man? I can't believe I heard that. These are the, so it's letting you know them same spirits are back here today. I thought I would never hear that. Letting you know we're in the time, brothers and sisters. We're in the time. Jump back to the verse that I wanted. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, they have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Wait a minute. Christ said that <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> there has not been a man that was born of wicked, I mean born of women. Lord have mercy. That's greater than John the Baptist. But somebody else going to say he got a devil. Somebody else going to say he wicked. Check the spirit out, brother. Check out these spirits. Read. Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding. So don't focus so much on that first statement. Listen. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. But John the Baptist was, was equated with being the greatest man on earth outside of Christ in the, in the earlier part of the verse. Can you dig it? That's what Christ said. There has not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. Now Christ is coming back and he's saying, but don't hold to that statement because the least man in the kingdom of heaven is going to be greater than him. Go ahead. And from the days of John the Baptist. And from the days of John the Baptist. Go until ahead. now. Until the time when Christ was speaking this. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. That's the part I want to get to. The kingdom of heaven is the whole nation of Israel. The whole nation of Israel is suffering violence. Read. And the violent. And the violent people. The Romans. The Edomites. Go take, ahead. Take it by force. They took the kingdom of Israel by force. So what did they do? They made the they made the kingdom of Israel suffer violence. That's the kingdom of heaven. When it said that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, the kingdom of heaven that people think about in the sky, that ain't suffering violence. The people that suffer in violence is us. We're the kingdom of heaven. That's the point. Okay? From the days, read it again. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. The Israelites, all 12 tribes, were suffering violence. Primarily, you had the three tribes that was over there at that time. Okay, you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, a uh, uh, southern kingdom mainly. And then you had stragglers of the other tribes that was, that was there from the time of Ezra, okay, when we was allowed to go back and build. So you had other stragglers of the tribes there in Jerusalem at that time as well. Okay, read that again. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. So I want y'all to focus on the kingdom of heaven suffering violence. The kingdom of heaven is the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now let's go back to Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, meaning our heaven, meaning our kingdom. This is history. 
that we're reading about here. This is history. Go ahead. A woman clothed with the sun. A woman clothed with the sun. Go ahead. And the moon under her feet. So this woman is the 12 tribes of Israel. This woman that was clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet is talking about the light of the commandments. Give me uh, Proverbs 6, 23. Book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. For the commandment is a lamp. Go ahead. And the law is light. And the laws of God is the light. So that's what this woman had. This woman had the light of God's laws. That's what we are now. Okay, we are the light of the world. We'll read that next. Okay, read that again. For the commandment is a lamp. For the commandments of God is a lamp. Go ahead. And, and the law is light. And the laws of God is the light. The laws of God is the light. Is the light. Now, uh, give me Matthew 5, 14. No, I know what I wanted. Psalms 148. No, no, no. Psalms um about the saints no uh one 147 19 to 20 that's what i need psalms 147 19 to 20 the book of psalms chapter 147 verse 19 i'm going to point out the reason why the the light belongs to the israelites this is the lights here this is the light here this is the sun and the moon we're reading about read he showeth his word unto jacob god shows his word unto jacob the father of the 12 tribes of israel read his statues and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Those are the commandments of God. That's what gives us the illumination of God's laws. To bring to be that light, to be that sun and that moon. That's how we light up the other. That's how we light up everywhere we go. I'm showing you again. I'm, I'm going through this to point out how important you are. Yes, Captain brought out an excellent class today about the leadership. Leadership is definitely needed. But what purpose is leadership if, if the leadership don't give you the light for you to be leaders wherever you go? Y'all understand that? It ain't all about the table up top, so to speak. The light of God's law goes all the way through the Israelites. Can you dig it? Read. Read that again. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Go ahead. His, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel, the nation of Israel. Go ahead. He hath not dealt so with any nation. God has not dealt so with his light, with his sun and his moon with any other nation. God did not give the sun and the moon, so you can understand the revelation. He did not give those commandments. He did not give those, you are the light of the world. He did not give that to nobody else but you. Read. He has not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation, meaning no nation outside of Israel did he give that to. Read. And as for his judgments. And as for God's judgments, the, the, the know how to apply God's laws and commandments. Go ahead. They have not known them. That's the reason why the whole earth is out of course, because he has not given that to them. The whole earth, the whole earth, everything is suffering because these people do not, the nations do not have the sun and the moon, like we read in Revelation, the, the, the power to understand God's commandments to set this earth up in its proper ruling, in its proper running. That's where you come in at. Okay? So the nations don't have that power. Regardless of how many churches they set up, it's not set up for them to do that. What kind of wisdom calls you to pollute the only water you can drink? What kind of wisdom calls you to pollute the only air you can breathe? That's letting you know that the earth is begging for the manifestation of the sons of God because the earth is saying, I'm in trouble. That's why it says that. The earth, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation, meaning the growth, the, the budding, the, the maturation of you, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to take over this earth so this earth can say, we are at rest, like those fir trees in Isaiah 14 says. The earth is waiting for that. Okay? So our job is to get the information from the Most High. He said, as he's, like, it's, like you brought up the class about the leadership, excellent. But we ought to get that information and bring it on down. So when you go to wherever you are, you will be the illuminating stars 
to where you're at. Can you dig it? Go back to Revelation. Was there more than that? There was more than that. Yes, we, sir. Read. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments. And as for God's judgments. They have not known them. The nations have not known God's judgments because it wasn't given to them. Read. Praise ye the Lord. And, the, and <laughs> we said praise the Father for not giving that to any other nation. How do you feel about that thing? That's what makes us special, ain't it? Everybody trying to mess, mess over us, uh, say all kinds of evil against us. God said, well, although you, you, you're speaking against my people, I'm only giving them the information and the, and the heritage to fix the planet Earth. So that's how he's going to beautify the meek with salvation, because we're going to have the knowledge to fix this earth up. Okay? And the Lord said, and our forefather said, what? Praise ye the Lord for that thing. Dig that. Now, Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. So this woman is the 12 tribes of Israel that is clothed with the, with the commandments, the laws, and the statutes, and the judgments, and the wisdom. All that was given to the 12 tribes of Israel. We have the tools or the solutions to fix, this pro to fix our people's problems and to fix this whole planet Earth. Hence, the Bible is the book of our fathers. Go ahead. And upon her head. And upon her head, meaning the head of the 12 tribes of Israel was what? A crown of 12 stars. So this woman represents Israel, and the leaders and the leaders in this is the what? The stars. Read that statement again. And the, upon her head. And upon this woman's head, the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. A crown of 12 stars. The crown represents rulership. So we're going to rule with this wisdom. We're going to break the nations with a rod of iron, bringing this wisdom down that the earth is going to be glad to, to receive. A lot of information in that first verse, ain't it? Let's read that again. Y'all been licking your chops all, all month. But go ahead, read. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Why is it using the word stars there? Because a star is an illuminating force. A star is the source of light. The, the stars, we are the stars. You are the stars. That's being illuminated. Give me that scripture. There's one in the Apocrypha that talks about that you may be illuminated. Yes, sir, I got it. Give me that. So I ain't even write that down, but here we go. Baruch chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God. This is the Bible, the book of our fathers. Read it again. This is the book of the commandments of God. This is the book of the commandments of God. Go ahead. And the law. And the law. Go ahead. That endureth forever. That how long is it going to endure? That endureth forever. This word of the Most High is going to be here forever. It's going to be here forever. So how long is this word going to be here? Hold that. Hold that. Give me Ecclesiastes 1 and 4. Ecclesiastes 1 and 4. How long is this word going to be here? Talk about the Bible is outdated. The Bible is old times. Yeah, you, you hear fools, foolish people say that. Oh, that's old biblical times. Come on, get with the times today. <laughs> they say, ignorant, foolish. Read Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse four. One generation passeth away. One generation passes away, and another generation cometh. And another generation cometh after that generation. Come on. But the earth abideth forever. But the what? The earth abideth forever. But the earth abides forever. The earth ain't going no place. So if the earth is going to abide forever, so shall this word abide forever. So we're going to be, this Bible is going to be with us as long as time exists. And he only gave that to Israel. Ain't that a beautiful thing? We just got to get there, brothers, and we're almost home. Let's go back to that in Baruch. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God. This is the book of the commandments of God. Go ahead. And the law that endure forever. And the Bible that endure. Let me say it like that because you got a bunch of evil people trying to get rid of the Bible. And the only thing they're going to get is death themselves. You ain't never going to get rid of the Bible. You can forget about it. It's going to stay here. 
trying to get rid of it, trying to rewrite it, trying to change it up. It's a beautiful thing. The Lord is wonderful with all of these plans to try to stop this truth, even try to label us a hate group for bringing it out. You know we're going to talk about that. They're trying to stop this truth from coming out by labeling the prophets of a, 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 a group of haters to try to get you to turn away from it. While at the same time, the Most High is making such big moves on this earth, ain't nobody going to be able to get away from this Bible. Read that again. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. And the law that endureth forever. So there's no reason for any of us that know this to fall out of this truth, thinking that, that some other doctrine is going to supersede this. This is where your, your, your test of time supposed to remain in this truth until the very end so that you can be rewarded for all of the evil that we went through all these years. I, you know, I think about it. How in the world am I going to go through all of these centuries, all of these years of being oppressed, downtrodden, beat up, spit at, discriminated against, jailed, shot down? And then here I am. Here we got the, we got the, uh, the, the Bible, which is showing us the kingdom, and we're going to let that go to the side, and we're going to end up dying with our enemies. The Most High has given us the chance to triumph over all of this. There is no other train coming after this here. This is it. That's why he says that in the scriptures. He said that, for lo, I send the apostles last. That's the reason why this is coming out now. Ain't nothing else coming after this. After this train here is death. After the caboose pass, that's it. You're done. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. All they that keep the commandments of God, which is what that woman that we was reading in Revelation was talking about, all that keep it shall come to life, everlasting life. That's what we want, to go through all of this, get to the end of time, end of this wicked world, like it says in Ezra. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Here we are at the doors. Ain't going to fall off. Some of us. But as y'all can see from that last Passover, the Most High said, nope, I'm bringing my sheep home. All praise to the Most High. I'm bringing my sheep home. So the enemies are mad. Give the Lord a hand for that thing. Our enemies are terrified, mad, upset. I've watched, Volk, I, I only saw just a little clip of it, Vocab Malone. You know him. Everybody heard about him, right? This little renegade Edomite running around trying to will his way into be, but being the people of the Most High, the Most High, no, you're not part of the Israelites. You're a slave. Just get ready for it. Mm -hmm. They don't like that kind of talk. So at first, when he was looking at the growth of, I'll just say IUIC just for the sake of, so you can understand what I'm talking about. IUIC was on the rise some years ago, and, and he was making a point about what he, he, he did one of his videos called The Subtle Genius. Uh, what was it? The subtle genius of IUIC. The situation that happened in um, where the brothers from? No, no, no. Up north with, with us, uh, Officer Solomon. Detroit. The thing that happened with Detroit and the shooting. In that video, he was showing how disciplined the men were, and he said that the, he said that he said that, that, that he said that IUIC. Not only did he say that we were organized, but he was saying that we we were uh, disciplined and. You know, he was giving kudos. I called it a commercial. I told brothers, download that thing. Because I know that as his truth, as his truth moves on, he's going to change his mind. And sure enough, he sure did. Now he's, now he's saying, now he's, I don't even want to say their name. He's giving kudos to another camp that's being truthful when they talk about raping women and babies and all of that. That's what he's saying now. And he says that we are not so truthful. Yes. That's what he's saying now. And he's saying that because... He said, you know what? The cat is out the bag. They're gone. I can't even do that. I, I just got to say anything to try to slow them down now. You, you dig it? So I just throw that out there. In other words, we're at the doors. The Edomite, of course, if your adversary tell you, if you let, me, let me put it this way. If your enemy says, come and have dinner with me, do you, are you crazy enough to go sit down thinking that, that you're going to really get a dinner? Anything that your enemy gives you to try to show as something favorable, you know it's not. The enemy was al is always going to send you in the direction that bring you into your detriment, not for your help. Whatever, in other words, let me say it a different way. 
whatever is good for your enemy is bad for you. So if they're telling you that you should listen to this one and not that one, you should know automatically to go the other way. Can you dig it? But at first, he was giving kudos because he said, you know what, I see they're growing, but, you know, maybe they'll be stopped before then. But as a, af after a while of continuing to see the growth coming out, he said, wait a minute, they're not stopping. They must be that people of the book. That must be what's in that Bible. So I have to be the Satan that I am and say, listen, don't follow that. Follow this. Can you dig it? All right. Where was I at? Brute 4, 1, you defend you. Come on. Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God. This is the book of the commandment of God. Go ahead. And the law that endureth forever. And the laws of God that endureth forever. So this Bible ain't going no place. Go ahead. All they that keep it shall come to life. All they that keep the commandments of God that endure in this truth, like it says in many parts of this Bible, he that, over, he, he that overcometh and endureth unto the end, to him will I give the kingdom. That's what the Bible says. All that do what? What did you just read? read all, that they, all they that keep it. All they that keep the commandments of the Lord. Shall come to life. You shall come to everlasting life and inherit the planet earth and all the blessings and everything in it. And you're going to be given the power to rule the, all the nations in righteousness and set this earth back in the order that it's supposed to be in. That's where we're at now. It's not an accident that you're here. It's not an accident that you're sitting and you're learning what you're learning. Some of y'all may not get it right now. Some of y'all might be thinking, well, you know, I'm just following along. That's fine. But after a while, it's going to click. You're going to realize what this is really about. And the Most High is making gods and princesses out of every one of you. Have the, have, have the spiritual tenacity to endure. Because there's a big payday coming. Read. But such as leave it shall die. But if you leave off from this, whatever excuse you give, you're going to die. Whatever reason you try to fathom up, oh, I left because of this, oh, such and such, this, whatever reason you use, you walk away from this, you're guaranteed death. Guaranteed. Is that it? There's more. Go ahead. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. That's the part right there. I know there's more coming. You just brought me back to why I called for the scripture. Read that statement again. Turn thee, O Jacob. Turn thee, O Jacob. When he says turn thee, O Jacob, meaning go, come off of the path that you were currently on in wickedness. Give me that uh, turn you at my reproof. I will render double, un you know what I'm talking about? Uh, Raywell, you stay where you're at. Okay. I need somebody else to get it. Uh, no, that ain't it. It's not that one. It's one that says, uh, turn to the stronghold, that one. Turn ye to the stronghold. Zechariah yeah. chapter 9, verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold. Turn you to the stronghold. Keep your finger there, and I go back to the other one, because I'm going to show you the reason why I went here. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 2. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Turn thee, O Jacob. You're the Israelites. The Lord wants you to turn away from your foolishness. Turn away from your temptations. Turn away from the evil. Turn away from the evil speakings, the lies, the slander. Turn away from all of that. Turn away from that path that you was going into, thinking that that was the way of the Lord. Turn away from that. Go ahead. Turn thee, O Jacob. And Turn take thee, O Jacob. Go ahead. And take hold of it. And take hold on these commandments. Take hold on this Bible. Now go back to the Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold. Turn you to the stronghold. The stronghold is the commandments of the Most High. Go ahead. Ye prisoners of hope. But you are prisoners hoping in those old things that you were involved in. You hung on to those old things thinking that that's the way of the Lord. And you became a prisoner to that thing. You became a prisoner to your sins. Became a prisoner to your, to, to your doctrines. Like a lot of our brothers and sisters are prisoners in their mind. Held up into these evil doctrines. Read. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. That the most I say he's going to render double unto us when he redeem us. Come on. Listen. When I have bent Judah for me. When he's going to bend the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. Fill the bowl with Ephraim. He's going to fill the bowl. Judah is that bowl. He's going to fill that bowl with Ephraim, meaning, what is he making? A bowl and a, uh, what did he say? I will bend Judah for me, and he will do what? 
filled the bow with Ephraim. Ephraim is the arrow. So the bow and arrow represents the weapon that the Most High is going to use to break this country, to break this planet down and set it in order. Go ahead. And raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece. Now give me Isaiah 40. Yes, sir. We're going we, we, we to tap in there some more. Give me, uh, I think it's Isaiah 51 and 20. Is that what I want? Jeremiah. Is it Jeremiah? It's Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah, Jeremiah what? Call it. Yeah. 50, uh, so I had the books wrong. <laughs> Jeremiah. Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. That's what we was reading in Zechariah. Thou, meaning Israel, is his battle axe and weapons of war. Read. For with thee. For with this weapon of war, Israel. Will I break in pieces the nations. Will I break in pieces the nations. That's Revelation. He said that we will be that, that sword. What did he say? That you shall break the nations with a rod of iron. That's what we're talking about there. Who's the ones that's going to get it? Esau. That's what we was just reading earlier. Because they're the end of the world. So it's going to go down. The most High going to bring it out. Okay. And we, when we do it, the most High going to give us the power to do it. It ain't talking about doing nothing now. We ain't got the power to do nothing. But when the most High get it set up, it's going down. Can you dig it? Let's go back to that Zechariah again. Mm. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold. This is why they call us a hate group. What kind of enemy would love to hear us saying this? Talk to me. What kind of enemy wants us to talk and, and relish in our book of our fathers, talking and relishing and, and, and exchanging ideas out of this Bible that is helpful to us? The enemy going to sit by, he going to call you a love group? No. He hate that thing. Read. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Turn to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Give me Corinthians, the, uh, the one I want, 10 and 4, for the weapons of our warfare. I need that too. Second Corinthians. Yes. Listen up now. We're still talking about the weapons of war. Everybody's with me? Yes, sir. Come on. Second Corinthians. So the weapons of war... Starting off now is this Bible. Read. Chapter 10 and verse 4. Mm. For the weapons of our warfare. For the weapons of our what? Warfare. Our what? Warfare. So we're at war. So if we're at war from an enemy, an enemy is not going to call us a love group. The war is to, is to re redeem the 12 tribes of Israel and bring them back to the Most High. But an enemy don't want that. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not carnal weapons. Go ahead. But mighty through God. But these weapons that we have are the commandments, and these are the weapons that's mighty. The commandments of God, that's what's going to clean us up. That's what is going to raise us up and build us up and unite us. That's what's going to strengthen us. That's what's going to cause, the like Zephaniah 2 and 1, uh, gather myself together. Uh, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. That's what's going to do it. Read. But mighty through God. But, but these commandments are mighty through God, which are the weapons that God is using. Go ahead. To the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of what? Strongholds. So when we was talking about strongholds there, turn ye. Go back to that. Give me, give me the Baruch, then give me Zechariah. I need the Baruch first. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 2. These are some of the strongholds. That we're talking about here. Read that. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Read. That thou mayest be illuminated. That thou mightest be illuminated. So where was the part in there that talked about uh, come out of the path? We, it was in there. Read up above that. Uh, verse 1. Come on. Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Read. Turn thee, O Jacob. That's the part I want. Turn thee, O Jacob. Turn from, turn from the strongholds that keeps us messed up. That's what Corinthians was talking about. Go back to Corinthians. That was the precept part there. So I got to teach y'all how to give me my precepts exactly where I want them. Yes, sir. But y'all all right. 
Read that. Corinthians <laughs> chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Come on. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's the part there. To the pulling down of strongholds. I want you to look at the link. To the pulling down of strongholds. Now go back to where we was at. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 2. Turn thee, O Jacob. Turn you from the same strongholds. That's the connection. Y'all all right? Y'all get where I'm trying to? Took a little while for us to line it up, but that's where I was trying to go. Turn you from those strongholds. Go ahead. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. And take hold of these commandments. Come on. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Walk in the presence of the light of God's stronghold, which is the new stronghold that the most I want you to take, wants you to grab hold to. Now give me to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. So we are prisoners of hope in the old strongholds, in the strongholds of evil, evil speakers, lying hypocrisies. Those are strongholds that our people love to do. Some of them will be in this truth for years and leave and go and go right back to that evil. All over Facebook, all over YouTube, all over Instagram with evil. Nothing but evil. Because they went back to a stronghold that they never really killed. Keep that in mind as we go on in this lesson. Read. Turn you to the stronghold. So turn away from your old strongholds. Get that old man. Turn away from that. And turn to this. Go ahead. Turn to these commandments. Read. Ye prisoners of hope. And you were prisoners in your old strongholds. Go ahead. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. This is what's known as repentance. Even today I will render unto thee, render double unto thee. When he beautifies this, the meek with salvation. Meek means the ones that listen to Christ. Read. Like Moses was known as a meek man. People thought that meekness meant weak. No, meek. No, the meekness of Moses was that Moses followed what Christ said. Follow what the Most High said. Go ahead. When I have bent Judah for me. So he said, I'm going to start this off by bending Judah. Go ahead. Fill the bow with Ephraim. So when he's, so Judah is that bow. He's going to bend the bow of Judah and he's going to put Ephraim in it as an arrow. Go ahead. And raise up thy sons, O Zion. The two kingdoms, Judah and Ephraim, represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And he raised up thy sons, O Zion, what? Against thy sons, O Greece. And that's going to go down when we go to, sec when we go to Ezra. When, when we also go to Revelation 12, 9 and 10, when it says, Now is come salvation and strength to our power, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. That's Esau. He's the devil that's going to that's be brought out of his kingdom. And when he's brought down, we rule it. That's what this is talking about here. That's the time period we're hitting here. Now, let's go back to Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. I want you all to pay attention to everything that I went over because I'm going to zero all of that back to the importance of you, even your little babies. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. For the weapons that we are employing now are not carnal weapons. Well, these are worse. And our enemy said, no, I'd rather you have guns and this and that so you can shoot up each other. But those weapons that you have out of that Bible, meaning to get your mind right, I can't deal with that weapon. That's too much power. Can you dig it? That's the weapon that he's really worried about. He ain't worried about you running around with a gun. He ain't worried about you running around with a knife and all that. That ain't bothering him. Because we don't have enough sense. We use it on each other. He don't, he, hell, he gave them to you. Negroes ain't manufacturing no guns or bullets or nothing. How the hell he get all these things? Read. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So these weapons here pulls down strongholds, pull down lies, pulls down hypocrisies, pull down so-called white Jesus, pull down an inferiority complex, pull down self-hatred, pulls all that down. Read. Casting down imaginations. We're casting down false imagine, casting it down, casting down the false visions, the dreams, all that is being brought down through the word of the most high, taught by the prophets. Read. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Go ahead. And bringing into captivity. And our job with these weapons here is to bring into captivity every thought. 
to the obedience of Christ. That's what that's what Revelation is talking about. We are going to bring every thought under the obedience of Christ with that rod of iron. That's what it's talking about. Okay, that rod of iron is going to bring it all into subjection. Everybody's going to be made to dance to the tune of this Bible or they're going to be dead. That's how it's going to go down. So I wanted to read that to let you know the how special all of you are because all of y'all are going to get that. Now, let's go back to Matthew 5. No, give me Revelation again. Re Revelation 12 and 1. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. So, class, we understand what that moon and the sun represent, right? The commandments of God, right? The illuminating power of the commandments being exemplified and exercised through you for the others to see your good works because they live in an in darkness. Give me that in Peter's. Uh, as a light that shineth in a dark place. This is the importance of the light, the sun and the moon that's in you. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter 119. Verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, meaning the light of God, that thou might be illuminated. We got to go back and read that again, that illuminate. We're coming back to that. Can y'all dig it? Read. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light. Hold it. What are we? A light. That shineth in a dark place. What is the dark place? Our people. The Israelites. That's the dark place. Our people are out there. That have not yet been brought into the beginning steps into righteousness. They have not been welcomed home yet. So you can understand. Like when you already came into the truth, you received the welcome home. And you were was, you was shown the beginning steps into righteousness. Our brothers and sisters that are out there, they have not seen that yet. So they are still in darkness. Like the Bible says, for darkness have covered the whole earth. And then it says, and the people gross darkness, meaning the Israelites. We were in complete darkness. Our people. That's why they're getting shot down. That's why they're getting murdered, raped, robbed. That's why that's happening. Read. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. For, so we are to take heed just like we are to be that light in the dark place where our people are. Read. Until the day dawn. Until the day dawn, because it's time for us to come up out of here now. Now let's go back to the other part, and then we're going to move on with our lesson. So we again, we are to be that illuminating light. So it ain't so much, again, about us per se. Our job is to teach you and for you to continue to carry that same light to our people that's out there in darkness as well as we are. We all have a job to do. Can y'all dig it? Read. Well, Baruch, Bishop. Yes, sir. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 2. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Walk in the presence of this a light. This illuminating light that we've learned in this gospel. Go ahead. That thou mayest be illuminated. That we may be illuminated. Go ahead. That we may be illuminated. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Now let's go back to the Revelation 12 and 1. Revelation chapter Now you understand the reason why it's using the word stars there. Read. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. That's the light there. Go ahead. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Illuminating stars. The 12 tribes of Israel is to illuminate this whole planet Earth with God's righteousness. That's how that works. Everybody's understanding me now. So as you read down through this chapter, you see Esau got, he was against that thing. Read verse 2. Verse 2. And she, being with child, cried. Travailing in birth. So we were trying to give birth to Christ. This is that history that I was talking about earlier that we read in the 11th chapter of Matthew. Read. And pain to be delivered. We were trying to have, we wanted Christ to be born because they, was, they sent out an edict to kill all of the young babies two years down. Just like they did in the time of Moses. Looking for the deliverer. Read. 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. The red dragon is the so-called white man. And he appeared in our heaven, and he caused our heaven violence. And he took our kingdom by force. That's the connection, okay? So when it's time for us to get back, he's going to be the one that, that Judah and Ephraim, that bow, is going to be to take back our kingdom. That's why it says that in Daniel's. And the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. That's how all that goes together. Y'all all right? Now, jump to the ninth verse. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. This is the time period that we're coming up on now. Go ahead. And the great, and the great dragon was cast out of his kingdom. Go ahead. That old serpent. Called the devil. The same so-called white man. He's the children of Satan. That's why his color's red. That's him. Go ahead. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. What did he do? Which deceiveth the whole world. There's no Bible on the planet that describes Christ as a white man. But yet your little babies will say, that Jesus. <laughs> and there's no Bible that says that. That's called major witchcraft and major deception. And the people of God. It's us. And we look at each other like niggas and spooks and the rest of it. That's called major deception. That's called the power of their persuasion media. And they're going to call us a hate group. And we're going to be stupid enough to actually believe that. That's a major witchcraft. Read that again. And the great, dra and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. Go ahead. And Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. What did he do? He deceived the whole planet Earth. He's the devil, meaning he's evil. And the word Satan means adversary. He is the opposer of God. That's what the word Satan means when you look it up. Satan means adversary. Devil means evil. He is evil and, he's a, and he is the opposer of God. Read. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out from his rulership. Go ahead. And his angels. We're cast out with him. His media, everything that's tied to his church music, all that garbage is going down with him. So when all that madness go down, his military, everything, his, his, his weapons, everything that's about promoting him is going to be brought down to nothing. In the book of Isaiah, it said that he's not, his name is not going to be on anything. His name is not even going to be on a piss pot, nothing. Read. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Somebody got mad at me and said, oh, man, he, he used those doggone words. Somebody got mad. I saw it in one of the comments. It said, you know, huh? <laughs> they don't like that thing. I said, why you got to talk like that? Huh? They need that thing. You said, now, how much help did you get in T.D. Jakes? How much help did you get in Rex Humbard and Jim Baker and Billy Graham? Your sons are still in jail getting raped by Big Bubba and, muscle, and, hu and Hustle Man. None of them around. He worried about some words. And, and the word piss is in the Bible. <laughs> Uh-oh. I just said something there. There's a scripture that said piss is against the wall. Huh? Yeah. That's in the scripture. So there you go. Y'all all right? <laughs> Where at? Where am I at? Verse 10. Read. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. So read 9 again. Read 9 straight through and 10. Listen. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into, into captivity. That's where he's going down. He's going to be brought down to hell, like it says in Isaiah. Go ahead. And his angels were cast out with him. Everything that's about him is going down with him. Listen now. Watch this. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. So when he goes down, listen what's going to happen right after that. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. So that's telling you that he got to be ex exterminated before we can rule. Who's saying this? God. He got to be wiped out. This is why it says that in Ezra. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Saying the same thing. This is what it's talking about. It's saying the same thing in Romans as well. 
He said that when he destroyed Esau, which is the vessels of God's wrath, immediately after that, he said he's going to bestow the vessels of mercy on Jacob. That's Romans 9, verse 22 and 23. That's the, that's the duality there. In Daniel, it talks about the same thing. It says, but the saints are after the fourth kingdom, the saints of the Lord shall take the kingdom. It's all throughout the scriptures. But they want to they play dumb when we go to church. Because you shouldn't be in church. You're in church now. Can I get a witness? <laughs> all right. Give me uh, Jeremiah. Now I'm going to get to. Was, that was it on that? There was more. more? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Verse 10 again. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, mm. which accused them before our God day and night. By calling us a hate group. You, call, you, you accuse us as a hate group day and night. <laughs> but your behind is going into slavery. Ain't nothing going to stop it. That's right. It's a beautiful thing. Got great days ahead of us. I know we got some trials and some tribulations. I ain't, I'm not even going to even think for a moment that our thrust to get towards the kingdom is going to be easy. The scriptures say through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of what happened just a few days ago that more demons are going to try to stop this truth. I recognize that. I understand that. I've been through this thing before. I've seen, I've seen different triumphs when we've made certain power moves, as someone would say. Satan came right immediately to try to sully it. So I'm just letting you know. We got a lot of battles ahead of us, but the scriptures say we're going to make it. Can you dig it? Those of us that endure. Keep that in mind. Is that it? That was it on that, right? Yes, sir. Now, get to how special you are with all of that that we just went over. Relish in that thing. Put that thing on your head like a helmet and wear it. Let, 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 that, let them seeds rain down in that biscuit. And turn your mind. Now I'm going to show you how special you are. Give me Jeremiah 1. You're sitting up here just thinking that I'm just here. No, you're not just here. I talked about this when I was in uh, Arizona. And I, um, I did a class out there called, what was it? This, uh, deflection is deception, but the elect will not be deceived. Something I think that's, I'm trying to remember if that was the exact title. But I was making a point. That when people give an excuse for leaving this truth, they are deflecting from the real reason why they are no longer able to walk in the gospel. And they give you, they drop a smoke bomb, boof. Make you, you up there looking in the smoke bomb trying to find out the real reason <laughs> when in the reality, they run it. You dig it. Read. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Now I'm going to talk about you special brothers and sisters, even the little babies. Watch this. Let's show you how precious your little babies are. Go before ahead. I formed thee in the belly. Read it again. Before I formed thee in the belly. Before God formed us. He's talking about Jeremiah, but he's also talking about all of us. Before God formed any of us. Go ahead. Before I formed thee in the belly. So wait a minute. If he said, I did something before you was made in the belly, that means that you existed. He can't say before I formed you if you didn't exist. You existed. You existed. Your little babies existed. You all existed. The Lord is saying, but before I took that existence and put you in the belly of your mama, I knew you. Read. Before I formed thee in the belly. Before I formed you in the womb. Go ahead. I knew thee. I knew you. I knew you women. That's what God is saying. I knew your little babies. I knew you little brothers, you men, you old men. I knew all of you before you was put in your mother's womb. That's a message that you tell your sisters. That's out here in the world talking about they want to abort their babies. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Right. Read that again. Before I formed thee in the belly. Before I formed you in your mother's stomach. Go ahead. I knew thee. I knew you. And think about that. The sperm and the egg. The egg is inside the woman. 
You with the sperm cell. Millions of sperm trying to get to that egg. Each of those sperms represents spirits. Each of those different sperms represents different spirits that are out there in the he- in the spirit world. And he's and, and all of them are fighting trying to get to that egg. Who's making a choice to determine which spirit get to that egg? God. He said, I don't want Isaiah right now. I want Jeremiah. I don't want Sister Azalea at this moment. I want uh, uh, Sister Kayla. That's an example. He's making a choice. He knew you. Before then, read it again. Before I formed thee in the belly. Before I made you in the belly. Because you was made already. You was always here. Who do you think Moses was talking to when he said, if you don't keep these laws and these commandments, you will go on slave ships. Those people that was with Moses back then, did they go on the slave ships with Moses? No. They died off. But Moses said that if, he, what did he say? And the Lord shall bring thee, meaning you. He was talking to them same spirits. He said, you will go into captivity on ships. So the Lord made it generations, generation down. That's why we read that earlier in Ecclesiastes. One generation cometh and another generation passeth away because the Lord has four, four cycles of spirits. That's the reason why he calls it the third generation and the fourth generation. That's the reason why he uses that. The first generation would be your children. Some of us are still here during our grandchildren. So he says, I'll get you for your sins in the third or the fourth generation. So you don't usually get to see your great grandkids, do you? Because chances are that's you coming back in that child, in that line. So when Moses was telling our Israelite people then, they ah, they didn't listen. But Moses was able to see the beginning times, the end times, and the midst of times. So Moses knew what he was talking about. That's why Moses didn't really bug out when he didn't get into the promised land. Huh? The rest of our brothers, they didn't worry about certain things because they knew that they were coming back. Can you dig it? Give me Revelation 10. What was that? What? That was it, finish right? Finish verse 5. Finish. Yeah, finish verse 5. I'm sorry. Then yes, give sir. me Revelation 10. I'm going to show you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew you. Go ahead. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Before you came out in birth, I sanctified you because I knew you before you was put in the womb. I the one that said that I want sperm number 978 to get there rather than 977. Because that 978 was the one that I wanted. That was Jeremiah. That was you, Nahum. That was you, uh, uh, Ehud. That was you, Yohanathan. That was you, uh, Kaz. Go ahead. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And I ordained you a prophet to the nation before you was even put in. So how special are these little babies? Read. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. That's how we feel in here. We feel like there's no significance. No, you're very significant. Now give me Revelation. Revelation 10. I'm show you again. Revelation 10, chapter, uh, uh, 10th chapter, verse 8. Revelations, chapter 10 and verse 8. And a voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said. This is John on the island. I recognize this. John is on the island of Patmos. Where he banished there to die. We're teaching the word of the Most High. The Romans put him there. Go ahead. Read it again. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again mm-hmm. and said, Go and take the little book which is open. In the hand of the angel. So so the the spirit told him to go and take the book. This is the book that we was reading about in Baruch. 
This is the commandments, the light, all of that. Take that book. Go ahead. Go and take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. The angel, go ahead, that gave him the book, read. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. Give me the little book. This is what he said to the angel, the apostle John. Read. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. And it shall be, it, it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. This right here is some heavy information. But I'm going to read further down, then I'm going to go back and break it down. Y'all all right? Yes, read. Read on. So verse, the little book, read verse 10. Verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And I took the book from the angel's hand and I ate it. Go ahead. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And when I ate this book, it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Go ahead. And as soon as I had eaten And it, as soon as I had eaten this book. My belly was bitter. My belly was bitter. I'm going I'm to explain that with another chapter. My belly was bitter. Go ahead. And he said unto me. Here's the part that I wanted to get to. And he said unto me. Go ahead. Thou must prophesy again. Thou, John, you died on an island. Thou, John, was on the island of Patmos. Thou, John, go ahead. Thou must prophesy again. Before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. That's letting you know that these spirits are back here today. So just like John was, just like you, you we ain't no different from John. All of us. Now, how are we going to prophesy? By be that illuminating light to our people. That's how we're going to prophesy. When they see the commandments, the illuminating commandments, that's going to help to get our people out of the darkness that they're in. So you, see how, so you see how special we are? You're little babies. All of us. Can you dig it? Sure. Now, give me Ezekiel. Now let, let's break it down. Ezekiel chapter 3. Book of Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 1. Verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Now, we just read that out of Revelation. Did we not, brothers and sisters? Read that again. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man. Son of man. Now he's talking to Ezekiel. In Revelation, he was talking to John. Go ahead. Eat that thou findest. Eat. Eat. What does it mean, eat? We're going to find out what it means. Read. Eat this roll. Eat this roll. The roll is the Bible. The Bible was, roll, was written on scrolls. That's why it's using the word roll there. So it ain't talking about rolling it up and biting it. It's talking about opening it and studying it and letting the nutrients of the Bible work on that head. Can you dig it? Read it again. Eat this roll. Eat this Bible with your mind. Go ahead. And go speak unto the house of Israel. And once you learn this light, once you learn this illuminating commandment and law, you are to go illuminate your people that are still in darkness. So when I was making a point about the leadership, the role of leadership, we giving you the guidelines on how to do that. But the ultimate power is when you go and you illuminate your brothers and sisters and they repent. That's the real praise, to see your brothers and sisters repent from the evil that they're in. That's the glory that I want to applause. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read. So I opened my mouth. And he caused me to eat that roll. And so I opened up my mind, and he caused me to eat this roll. I mean, there's so much information in there. That goes into Isaiah, like the scriptures say, whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? If you ain't being taught that, you ain't, your mind ain't opening up to nothing. You got to be taught on how to receive the roll in your mind. Church ain't going to give that to you. T.D. Jakes ain't going to give that to you. Rex Humbard and the rest of these snakes, I mean, uh, preachers, they're not going to give you that. I shouldn't call them snakes, right? There I go again. I was hear more negative comments. Why you got to talk like that? Bring it out. <laughs> Read. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he caused me to eat the Bible, meaning understand the laws of the Most High. Go ahead. 
And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat. Cause thy belly to eat. I'm going to break it down. Cause thy belly to eat. Cause thy belly to eat. Read it. And fill thy bowels with this roll. And fill thy bowels with this roll. All those words mean something. It used the word, the first part of it, it said, eat this roll um, in your mouth, like it said in Revelation. Then it said, uh, it says, so I opened my mouth and I received it. And then it said, it went to my belly. And then it said, fill thy bowels. So this is talking about a Bible being digested. Can you dig it? It ain't necessarily talking about your digestive tract physically. It's talking about your spiritual mental tract. Like I talk about many times when brothers and sisters first come into this truth. They're coming in brand new. The four separate groups of Israelites. You all, we all want to make it to that last one. The one where the, where the, where the seeds fell on good ground. You, you dig what I'm saying? But during that process, you're being tried. Temptations, wickedness, lies, slander, your own impediments, your own demons. All of those things will be the reason to cause you to leave out of this truth and you'll never make it. So you got to go through all of that to make it to that last group. Now, let's go to Ezekiel. Let's explain that. Of course, this is like I said when I was in Raleigh, Captain. I was making the point that this, this series is going to be well over one part, two parts, but I'm doing it in sections. Can you dig it? So I'm be, I said that I wanted to do the next one in Columbia. So let, let's see how that goes. Read on. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 3. Uh, and he, read, read one again. I'm gonna break it, now I'm going to break it down. Yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Son of man, all of you, men and women, you're coming into this truth, you're learning this gospel. Same thing applies when you're getting the understanding of Mark 4 when it talked about uh, the seeds that fell on stony ground, the, that some fell by the wayside, some fell among thorns. I'm talking about that parable. So that's coinciding with what we're reading here. Read. Read again. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. So when you come into this truth, you're being taught the commandments of God. You're being taught the ways of the Most High. You're being taught how to deal with your own demons as well as deal with the demons of your own brothers and sisters. You're learning how to come together. Uh, come to, what is the word that says, forbid not the uh, unity of the brethren and the symbol, forbid not the assembly. Forsake not the assembly, thank you. All of that teaches us how to deal with our own weaknesses because we have to be alongside our brothers. We have to be alongside our sisters, and we have to learn how to be a nation again. We have to learn how to be a nation again. We were destroyed as a nation, and we know nothing about nationhood. We got to learn that all over again. Read. Eat this roll. Eat this roll. Eat this Bible that's going to fix you up, that's going to teach you how to be a nation again. Under God. Go ahead. And go speak unto the house of Israel. So once we learn how to deal properly with ourselves as a group, as a nation, then we can go and be that lighted example to our brothers and sisters that are out there in darkness. So when they see the brothers marching together, when they see the sisters with the daughters of Sarah and the different things that they're doing. And they see that they see them operating as a nation. And our people are looking at us and say, wow, I never knew that we could be such honorable, righteous people. When they see things like the 300 program, which I'm going to show you a little bit today, that's dealing with these brothers, getting these, getting these men to be real men. After they done call us thugs and, and hoodlums and all of that, the Most High is building these men up. Building these families up, building these women up, building up the nation of Israel. That's what's happening. Read. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. So the Lord said, 
Ezekiel said, I opened up my mind. In other words, I humbled myself to the commandments. I didn't buck up against the change. I didn't buck up against the discipline. I didn't buck up against the trials. I didn't buck up against the discipline and the chastisement that the Lord said. I didn't buck up against it. I opened my mind and allowed it to work on me. Read that again. So I what? So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And once, and once we open our mind, we open ourselves to the commandments. Like the scriptures say, for at first she will walk with you by crooked ways. And then give me that real quick because there's a part in there. He said, I walk with you by crooked ways and then she will become your friend. Yes, sir. That's when you're allowed to, that's when the discipline comes in and you've allowed it to work on you. You got it? Yes, sir. Read it. Sirach chapter 4, verse 17. Listen now. For at the first. For at the first. Go ahead. She will walk with him. She by... is this role. She is the role that we're reading about in Ezekiel. She is the commandments and the, and, and the statutes and the laws on how to deal with your brothers, how to deal with your sisters, how to deal with the family. Teaching us this. Go ahead. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. The crooked ways is us still following the old strongholds that are still pulling at you while you're trying to walk right. The strongholds are still trying to pull you away. But you're saying, you know what? I'm going to give this Bible a chance. Read it. Read it again. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. The she is the role. The she is the discipline of this Bible. The she is the laws, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. And bring fear and dread upon him. And you will begin to respect the judgment of God. That's the fear and the dread. You will begin to read about the, the, the punishments and the judgment that the Lord is, will give you if you decide not to walk along with this role that I'm giving you now. Go ahead. And torment him. With her discipline. And will torment us. Lord, Lord, I almost died. By me breaking your Sabbath, I almost died, but you spared me. By me doing this, by me not doing that, by me being evil to my sister, being evil to my brother. And the Lord spared me death, fear and dread, because I read his commandments and what he said that he would do if I broke these laws. And he didn't, he didn't kill me right then. So it brought instant fear and dread. I said, okay, I got it. Read that again. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. For at the first, the Bible will walk with you by your crooked ways. While you're still fighting evil. While you're still fighting your temptations and your lusts. Go ahead. And bring fear and dread upon him. And the Bible, the laws and the judgments will bring fear and dread. Lord, I'm still dealing with this girl that, ain't, that I ain't trying to marry. Some of us are still dibbling, dabbling. Fear and dread. Look, sister, hey, you ain't want to come to the truth, I'm gone. Fear and dread. But what happens? A lot of times you get brothers, they still don't want to cut that off. Then the next thing you know, boom, they're on no fellowship. That's an example of the fear and dread they ain't really working. Can you dig it? Read. And torment him. With her discipline. And torment him with her discipline. All of this is encompassed in Ezekiel. I'm going to break all that down. And torment him in her discipline. The discipline of the commandments. Read. Until she may trust his soul. Until she may trust his soul. Was that it? And try him by her law. And try him by her law. So the point of the discipline walking by you with crooked ways. The discipline wants to get to a point where it can trust you. Where he can say, you know what? I see you ready for me to dwell in you. And then we make discipline our friend. That's when you open your mind up. Now let's go back to Ezekiel. That was it, right? Yes, sir. Go back to Ezekiel now. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 2. So I opened my mouth. So I opened my mouth. So I allowed the discipline to become my friend. So that now the discipline can trust me. Can you dig it? Yes, sir. Can y'all see the connection? Yes, sir. Read. And he calls me to eat that roll. And he calls me to eat it. Now I'm not, not only am I learning about it, now I'm taking it internally. 
in my spirit. It's no longer on my tongue physically. It's no longer in my mind. I'm excited to be Israelite. You dig it? Now the work comes in. Go ahead. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat. So now cause thy belly to eat. Think about how food actually works. The food itself has nutrients in it when you eat it. It tastes good on your tongue, but the, but the benefits of the food has not done anything until it gets into your stomach. Where your chemistry breaks it down and extracts the nutrients from it. Can you dig it? That's when it's in the belly. So when we first come in, we learn about the Sabbath. We learn about different laws and commandments and all that. But it's just memory now. But as you endure in this truth for a few years, then you actually begin to live it. And it begins to be a part of you. That's the belly part. Can you dig it? Read. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat. And fill thy bowels with this roll. So when you fill your bowels with this roll, that means the commandments is being shown in all parts of your body. You got your fringes. You talk different. Your speech is different. You're no longer talking crazy. Everything, people don't even, family members don't even recognize you anymore. Can you dig it? They'll say something negative, but what's really happening is that you've been a complete changed person. Man and woman, you've been completely changed. Your garments have changed. Your speech changed. The way you eat, everything changed. That's when it's being shown through your bowels. Read. And fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. And be filled up with this, with this truth so that it can be illuminated through the branches of your body. Go ahead. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. So when I ate it, it was in my mouth for sweetness. Because I learned that I'm going to get the kingdom. All of this is what Ezekiel is talking about, right? Now, go back to Revelation. When you read from 4 on down, that's where the bitterness came in at. Okay? You know what? Stay there. Stay where we're at. Read verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 4. Let me read some of that bitterness so you can understand that it's correlated with what we read in Revelation. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak my words unto them. Because the words is in us now. The commandments is in us now. It's in our mind, it's in our spirit, and it's in our actions. As you really, as you eat nutritious food, it tastes good in your mouth. It benefits you in stomach. The nutrients from that causes your body to strengthen because you're putting the right food in. The bowels. It's all throughout you. So once you get this proper example of that light that we were talking about in Revelation, that, tw that crown of 12 stars that even your little babies have in them, then we are to go to the house of Israel and be that illuminating light among them. That's what verse 4 is talking about. Read verse 4. I see you want to get in, Cap. I'm going to let you get in there. Read that. Verse 4. Verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. Read. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. That's the people that's in darkness, like I was talking about earlier. For they are in the valley of darkness. But we are the light within that darkness. Read. And of a hard language. But our people are not strange to us. They're not of a different language. These are our people because we came from them. Go ahead. But to the house of Israel. But we're going to our own people, but they have not been illuminated with God's laws. So that's the difference between us. But our job is to illuminate you. Right. So we're all leaders. You women are leaders. When you go among your sisters. You're an example, the saviors that the Bible is talking about. That's talking about that. So that they may see your good works and repent and glorify the Father in heaven. That's what saviors do. Go ahead, Captain. Dig, I just want to say right quick, because when you brought up in Sirach 4 and 17, where it says, uh, she will walk with thee in our crooked ways. 
a lot of us remember, even in our crooked ways, before we came into the truth, we had bits and pieces of truth that we didn't quite understand. It didn't all connect yet. And you use the analogy of, of, of food. You know, even when you eat food, it's a process. It starts with going into the mouth, then going to the belly, right? You can't eat but even so much at a, at, a, at a certain time. Am I right? Even in this truth, a lot of new brothers come here, a lot of new sisters come here. Brothers, you know, they, they, they got the zeal, but they can't take but so much in. You understand what I'm saying? They can't, they can't understand it all right then. It's just like taking in food. It's a process that we all have to go through. From the time when we was out there in the, in the world walking through our crooked ways, bringing, coming to this very point where we're at now. It was a process. That's the same thing I just want to use the analogy when you use the food, okay? It takes time to digest and take in this truth. You cannot rush this process. You got to let the Most High have his will with you. All praise. All praise to the Most High. Now, I'm going to move on and give me the book of... Well, you know what? Give me Matthew 5. Let me read that. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Then we're going to jump into a little bit more of our subject. This was like the, be the beginning stages, but I just needed to bring those things out to get you set for what's coming. Uh, Matthew 5, 14. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Talking about you now. Our job is to illuminate our brothers, that are st brothers and sisters that are still in darkness. Listen. Ye are the light of the world. The, the illuminated ones, the ones that God chose to be. He said that I knew you in the belly. Before I put you in the belly, I knew you. And I ordained you to be exactly what we're reading here. I, I put you there for you to be the light to our people that are still in darkness. Read. A city that is set on a hill. A, whoa, whoa, whoa. a what? A city. A city. The nation. The assembly. The congregation. A city involves different factions of business, different orders of operation. They interconnect. They work together for the common collective good of the whole nation, the city. You don't find within a, in an actual city where the police department works, works adverse to the hospital, where the hospital works adverse to the food industry, where the sanitation works in opposition to the airport. All of these things have a binding synchronicity that, that unites them in a total operation of making the city functional. Can you dig it? They don't teach us even simple stuff like this we don't even learn in school. The kind of stuff that I'm talking about now, they don't even teach no level of this at all in terms of us. They talk about it for them, but they just want us to be consumers. But they don't talk about us with us having the mind to be able to deal with each other. I, was di I did a small interview after Passover, and one of the, quest one of the questions was asked about what, the, what can I uh, say in, uh, concerning the importance of what we call the Black Wall Street. You dig what I'm saying? The little, the, I said that little thing. The thing that we do where you have entrepreneurs, you know, little entrepreneurs, little brothers and sisters. They ain't got no degrees or nothing like that. Not yet. But they have their, their, they have their stand set up. They're, they're this set up. They're that set up. And all of those things. And then we have literally like, like a Wall Street. You get T-shirts, hats, music, all kind of things. Great stuff. Books. Wonderful. So you ask me. He said, what do you think, what, do you, what is the significance of Black Wall Street? Because you get a lot of people that try to speak against that. You know how I am. You, if, if you're too dim to understand the importance of it, just get out, because I can't even talk to you. If your mind is that doggone below the ground, I'm not going to insult my intelligence by trying to have a conversation with somebody who can't think. You dig what I'm saying? That's not me being boisterous. I really don't have the, to for the tolerance for stupidity. Okay? So, I just needed to say that. So the question was asked about what do I perceive the importance of that Black Wall Street? And this is what I said. I said that although it's small in nature, we ain't dealing with millions of dollars or anything like that, right? It is the practice of us learning how to deal with each other. Because we don't learn that in society. If we learn 
This sister has, she has hair products. This brother over here, he has music. This sister over here, she has T-shirts. This one over here has hats. This one over here has pants, shoes, different things like that. If I get to learn how to have commerce and trade using buying and, and selling decisions among them, it acclimates me to a society of my own people. It puts me in the posture of making me feel comfortable. Me going to my brother. They are food sale, cake, they're selling this, they're selling that, whatever it is. I'm comfortable with being able to trade with my own brothers and sisters. That's powerful. Your little babies. Thank God these little kids are coming up and they're learning that now. They didn't have to go to the foolishness that we went in. We go inside the store, little Moab. Hurry up and buy. Hurry up and buy. Hurry up and buy. <laughs> Following me all over the damn store. Huh? I ain't got to go through that crap when I'm with my own people. Can't even speak English. Cursing me out. Got a little woo foo ha wing following me all over the store. <laughs> where, where am I at now? Verse oh, 14. <laughs> Read. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. We are. So That's what we're doing with the Black Wall Street and the many things that we do on our level, they will grow into bigger things. But the main reason why we do this now because it trains us mentally. It trains us mentally. Go ahead, Captain. I see you got some books up here. Give it to them because I know they need that thing. Stuff like this here is, right. is mind-bending. Mm -hmm. And it will fix our little child children up. Go ahead. This right here is a book, one of the brothers, written by Abel Israel, narrated by Emmanuel Israel. And it really touched me because it says, take part in a conversation between father and son on the depiction of Jesus. Let's see what the Bible has to say. It didn't say what the book had to say. It says, let's see what the Bible has to say. It leads you right back to the Bible. It's powerful for our kids to see this, to learn this. We didn't have that when we was in school. Y'all know we was picking up old, old Marvel character books. You know what I'm saying? Always had to have some pictures in. We got pictures in this. But what I'm saying was, yeah, Spider-Man. Right. All this foolishness that we was being, you know, twisted with. Then, then when they give you a superhero, they kill, kill him off. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you don't even get to, like, Panther, boom, he gone. He died in he, real He gone. He exactly gone. right. And the, and the mothers can't even tell her babies that he's dead. Y'all remember when I talked about that before? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And Go ahead, here's, here's another one right quick. Little Jedediah, written by Yosef in Israel, illustrated by Ariella Israel. That's heavy there. I'm talking on about the that. On the back. You... Yes. On the back it says, we are family. Go ahead, man. This is some powerful stuff. This is a power stuff, and this was donated to the school. So it shows you the direction that we have to go into in order to rebuild this nation. Now, I'm going to go a little deeper. Give me that book again. Hold that up. I'm going to show you how far, like, like when I said the question was asked to me, the significance of what we do. I'm going to give you an example just using this one thing. Out of the many things in Black Wall Street, how many different tables and things that we had in Black Wall Street? Probably hundreds of them. But I'm going to use one. To make my point, when we were young as little children, when we go and buy a book out of the bookstore, could be little Tommy, little engine that could, whatever it was. Follow me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? The author of the book, you don't know who the hell they are. Can you dig it? So there's no real connection to the people that wrote the book. Can you dig it? I just figured it out just by listening to this. This is my first time here. Hearing you bringing this out like this here, and I just zeroed in on the point about the author. Who's the author of this book again? I'm going to show you something. That your little babies had the chance to realize that when we were young, we didn't get that. There was no connection to the author. Random house book. Who the hell is that? We don't know who these people are. You dig what I'm saying, though? Who's the author of this book? What's the name of it? Who's it? Written by Yosef in Israel, illustrated by Ariella Israel. We know these people. So when my little son, when my little daughter will read this and say, oh, this was written by so and sister so-and-so. Instant connection. 
brother so-and-so, then it, then it really has a real connection to your sons and your babies. That's how important stuff like this is. So that's the reason why I say when I get some nooker that want to try to downgrade what we're doing, I close the doors on him. I don't even want to talk to him because he's too simple. You dig it? Because the stuff like this here is what our children need. They won't grow up with this self-hatred and feel like they can't do nothing. That's why I say you're living in the greatest times now. You get this. I'm looking at children that's eight, nine years old. That is, I'm like, wow, look at the thinking. They don't have none of the crap that we came up with in our teens and adulthood. These little kids coming up with their mind right. So don't tell me what we can't do. I don't want to hear that mess. All right. Calm down a little bit. Where are we at? Verse 14. Uh, yes, read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Thank you, Captain. Excellent information. Ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. So, we are, so the commandments is what allows us to do everything that we're doing. Follow what I'm saying. Everything that every program that we have set up, every, every uh, department that we set up, Every faction, every order of operation that we set up is um, underneath the umbrella of the commandments of God. So these are righteous things that we're doing. And whenever I get some nuka that try to say, why are y'all doing that? I say, well, you can't understand that this is what God is, is ordaining. I can't talk to you. Sit down until you get some sense. Read. A city that is set on a hill. Cannot be hid. We are that city. This, this, like I said, this black wall street, this is part of a city. Everything that we do is part of a city. It's the, uh, it's the understanding and the, op the organizational operations that we, that we use backwards and forwards in each other makes us a city the same way an actual city operates. The trains, which is a system that works with the schedules of your jobs. The bus system, the sanitation system, all of those systems have a synchronicity that ties them all together for the common good of the motor of the uh, operations of the city, the mobility of the city. That's what we're learning. God is teaching us this. Can you dig it? Read that again, 14. Ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. We're supposed to show our people that listen, listen. God has your constitution, the Bible. This is what unites us all. This Bible is our constitution. It is our way of life. Read. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. This is a city that God says is going to sit on the hill that's going to shine light into the valley of our destroyed brothers and sisters. And that light cannot be hid. That's the reason why they're showing up. That's the reason why they're coming in. This is no phenomenon to me. I understand what this Bible says. My, this Bible says that, uh, that all the, the one-third of Israel going to wake up to this truth. So I'm not surprised that what I saw in Passover. Ain't no surprise to me. Can you dig it? We're going to take the king. That's what the Bible says. We're going to do that thing. For those that are standing on the side, scared and trembling, that's your problem. But you ain't stopping this train. No matter how hard you try, you ain't stopping it. But that don't mean we're not going to go through some, some troubles. Scriptures say that we're going to get all these things with persecution. You remember that scripture? I read it, well, I think I read it a few times since I've been down here. I don't even remember where it's at. It said that we shall get these things through persecution. So we're going to be persecuted. It's in the Gospels. I know that much. So we're going to get these things through persecution, but we're going to get there. That correlates with um, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's basically saying the same thing, so y'all can understand. So we're going to get tried, and that's what we were talking about with Ezekiel. So as we're coming and we're learning, when that bitterness comes, that's the bitterness there. The trials, the slander, the evil, the, the false labeling. The tailbearing, the lies, the setups, media, 
news programs, SPLC, all that. That's what. That's the bitter. That was bitter in my belly because if we if we if we just dropped the Bible and became Negroes again, we got no problem. Can I get a witness? No, well, he's not yet. Because the Most High gonna give him the ex, the the, the uh, ultimate problem of death. But you ain't gonna have no problem with the enemy when you stop doing this. So that and that Ezekiel. Let's read that Ezekiel again. No, give me the Revelation of Red Ezekiel. Go back to the Revelation again. Revelation uh, chapter 10. Yeah, verse 10. Let's just jump down. Verse, let's see what it says in verse 10. Read verse 10. Revelation chapter 10 and verse 10. And I took the little book. Right, that's what I want. And I took the little book. This is where we are now. We take this Bible. We took this role, all the commandments and everything that we're doing. Go ahead. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand. Go ahead. And ate it up. And I ate it in my mind. Go ahead. And it was in my mouth. Sweet as honey. Because we first learned that we're Israel. God loves us. We know we're not niggas and spicks and all the rest of the things that this world tried to say we were. We realize that Christ is black. These are the things that sweeten our mouths. But but that's a but that comes with the price because the whole world wants us to be what they made us. They don't want us to be what God is doing to us. Go ahead. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. That's why it says that you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So when they talk about the hate group, they're the hate group against God. And we represent God. We represent our king. We represent Christ. We are the illumination of God's law. We are the stars that are to light our people up that are still in darkness. So you're not just ordinary people, you brothers and sisters. Never think that. Never look at yourselves like you're just ordinary. No, there was a decision made in the heavens. There was a decision made in the heavens that said, I need you instead of this person. Never look at yourselves as insignificant. There was a decision made in heaven with the angels that said, I want you instead of this person or that person. And I ordained you to do exactly what you're doing right now. Make your life count. The world you're going to be born. That's the most high talks that you waste your talent. The most high calls you to be born and then you do nothing. The Lord said that servant is going to catch complete hell. That wicked servant. We were put on this earth to make things happen, to make your life count. The, the, tomorrow is not always promising in terms of our lives today. What impact would you leave on the little babies and the young brothers and sisters that's coming up behind you? Think about that. Last thing I want to do is go down in infamy. No. I'll do my best to try to be the best example to all of you. For you to reckon, for you to be the, the realization of the great gift that God put in every one of you. That's where my heart sings. When I see you come up out of your, out of your destruction. When I see you rise up. When I see greatness illuminate from you, because I know, I know there's no greater people on this earth than you. Now, with time running, give me my video. First video started at 40. I'm going into We Are Not a Hate Group again. And uh, I just want to run some scripture real quick. We're not a hate group. And so being that we're not a hate group, how do we defeat that popular persuasion of saying that we are a hate group? Y'all all right? Give me my video. Start at 40 seconds. I played this last week. I mean, a couple of weeks ago. But I want to draw from that, then we're going right into the lesson. Go ahead. <laughs> In order for you and me to devise some kind of method or strategy to offset some of the events or re a repetition of the events that have taken place here in Los Angeles recently, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. We have to get to the cause of it all or the root of it all. And it is because of our effort 
toward getting straight to the root that people oftentimes think we're dealing in hate. Stop. That's the point there. We are labeled a hate group. Why? Because we're trying to remedy the actions of hate, which is what destroyed us. So never be fooled by them to say, oh, you're a hate group, you're this or you're that. No. All that's designed to get you off the proper mark of where you're going. So how do we deal? We, we deal by addressing the actual problems. Give me Deuteronomy. No, give me Leviticus. Leviticus 26, they that hate you. I need that for a second. Yes, sir. And I'm going to read that in conjunction with something. I wanted to make sure that I remembered this. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 17. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. And because of our disobedience against God, we shall be slain before our enemies. Go ahead. They that hate you. They that hate us. Shall reign over you. So if they hate us, you think they're going to tell us the truth? They're the ones that's hating on us, but they're telling us that we are a hate group because we are trying to get those that are ruling over us in hate from being over us. Can you dig it? <sighs> there was two names that I wanted to mention. I said Dylan Roof and George Floyd, I think it was, right? George Floyd. And there was an association that I wanted to talk about with that. George, them that, hey, read that again. I'm trying to get my thoughts together. And I will set my face I against you. I told my you. wife to rem rem remind me of those two names. And I had a thought in my mind as to why I picked those two, George Floyd and um, Dylan Roof. So now I got it. Go ahead, read. And I will set my face against you. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate you shall rule over you. So that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the people that hate us, and they have the power to rule over us. So because of that, things are not going to go nowhere near equitable or nowhere near fair or anything. Case in point. George Floyd. And there's a trial going on now. It's just about ended. They that hate you shall rule over you. Keep that in mind. George Floyd died, was murdered. I'm using the word died because he didn't die. They killed, they, that cop killed him. You did, okay. Then do you understand? Was murdered for a $20 counterfeit bill. Okay. And we don't even know how far that goes, because he might have known about it. There's many times you can end up with a counterfeit bill in your pocket or whatever that you got, and then you go spend it, and the next thing you know, you did. And you be like, why? Oh, I didn't know. I got this from so-and-so. That happens. Regardless, they say he resisted arrest. They're trying to say all kinds of things to justify him being put to death. Read that scripture again. And I will set my face. Just give it the part that I want. Yeah, we don't know. Read the whole thing. Got to, got to bring all God's words in there. I can't, can't tone it down. Get, get all God's words yes, in there. Yes, sir. And I will set my face against you. God said he's going to set his face against the nation of Israel because we do not want to keep his commandments. Go ahead. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. And you shall be slain before your enemies. Before your enemies. Go ahead. They that hate you. They that hate you. Shall reign over you. Shall rule over you. So now, let's go back to George Floyd. $20. He's dead. Murdered. And they're in court trying to say the reason why he's dead is because of fentanyl and drugs and this and the exhaust from the car and all types of madness. All of that. I'm going to just play with that for a little bit. Let's say he was on dope. Let's say that he was high on fentanyl. Let's say that he was high on PCP crack and all the rest of it. Because the whole point is to demonize him. Y'all all right? Tell me this. Why in the hell? There I go again. Why do you use words like that? But America is hell, ain't it? 
So I think I'm using the right words. Why in this hell? I better say it that way. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the scriptures say we're in hell. Give me that, Isaiah. I got to give it to him. Give me Isaiah 5, 14. Just, just, just throw that out there. If they're using hell, they're using bad words. Let's read that, Isaiah 5, 14. I mean, I ain't going to forget my point. Make sure I go back to my, with my brother now. Read. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 14. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. The condition of hell has gotten worse. Read the 13th verse. Verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. We're in captivity. We're in America. We're in hell. We're in captivity. Therefore, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Same scripture. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. Because they have no knowledge. Because they have not the knowledge of God's light, the laws. Go ahead. And their honorable men are famished. And their preachers and T.D. Jakes and all of that, they're famished, meaning that they, they are empty of giving the people the light. They're not giving the people the light because they themselves don't even have it. So they're famished, meaning that they're empty of God's commandments. Read. And their multitude dried up with thirst. And the people that's listening to these empty preachers are dried up with thirst because they're not being fed. Go ahead. Therefore. And because of them not being fed, this is what happened. Hell hath enlarged herself. The condition of hell has gotten worse. Hell has enlarged herself. That's what George Floyd is. Hell has gotten worse. And it's gotten so bad. Read it. And has what? Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. This hell has enlarged herself, gotten worse. Go ahead. And opened her mouth without measure. Meaning that the hell is so bad you can't even measure how bad it is. Have opened the, the conditions of hell have gotten so bad we can't even measure it. That's how bad it is for our people. So it's no surprise to me why our brother would go get fentanyl. Why he would go get crack. Why he would go get this drunk on this and, and high on that because they're trying to escape the reality of hell because they haven't been taught how to get out of it they haven't been taught that the way out of all of that those strongholds is his commandments they haven't been taught that but what does the enemy do he gives you crack on tap give you crack wholesale give you track crack on a conveyor belt truck loads of it then when we mess with it, and then you kill us, you say, oh, it was fentanyl. It was his own doing. All for $20. Can you dig it? It's heavy, ain't it? Now let's get Dylan Roof. <laughs> yeah. Bring it up. Yeah. Come on. I ain't going to forget my point. Y'all all right? Sisters, y'all all right? What you got? Bring it on in now. Don't make me wait for it. <laughs> all right, it says here, in the photo, the tip of Calvin's foot could also be seen The tip of who? Calvin's. That's oh, that's, that's the cop. Sh right, that's uh, the cop. Derek Chauvin. 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 That's okay. No, Chauvin. I, just, I knew what you meant, but I wanted to make sure because they'd be like, no, but they ain't talking about him. No, right. I wanted to make sure that it was talking about him. All right, so let me read it right. <laughs> it says, in the photo, the tip of Chauvin's foot could also be seen slightly off the ground as he kneeled on Floyd. Did y'all hear that? That means all 100% of his body weight is on his neck. Right. Go ahead. It says... Who was pinned to the street? That's ninety-one point five pounds coming down directly off Mr. Floyd's neck. Ninety-one point five pounds. Right. That's, that's Derek's. That's that's the cop's weight, plus the equipment that he was wearing. Cause that that equipment is heavy. That gun belt and all that, the vest and all that stuff adds weight. To his body. So I don't even know if they're including that. But all of that is as poundage on this man's neck. But yet they're trying to demonize him, talking about fentanyl and the rest of it. And our people would not even be on this stuff if they weren't trying to escape the hell that we're in. Y'all dig this? So now we, we took care of that. 
Thank you, brothers. Now, give me Dylan Roof. Now, let's talk about Dylan Roof. I was trying to remember. Dylan Roof is the man, the white man, the Jesus that showed up at church. Jesus knocking on your door with his blue eyes. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That Jesus opened it up. Because the pictures inside got blue-eyed Jesus. The little babies looking at it. They ain't like our kids. I can be like, no, that's the devil, mama. Don't open the door. Y'all teaching hate. But over there, Lord, let Jesus in. They let Jesus in. They got into a prayer together. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong with what I'm about to say. While they were doing the prayer, in the midst of the prayer, you hear all black folk. Historical black church. Historical. So he went there to get rid of black history. I'm going to go down in history. I'm going to go down in white history as the one that killed niggas. That's in his mind. Can you dig it? A day ago, he used it. I know how people will be, you know, they don't like when we use words like that, but you got to bring the reality out to our people. Like I said, when I was in Raleigh, brothers worrying about the, the language that I'm using. But when you're behind those bars and dealing with hustle, man, he said, I'm going to stick my foot so far up your behind, you're going to taste my shoelaces. And he, they were bleeping out all kinds of words. But that, them little kids that was there hearing that, they were hearing it all. And they were worrying about some words. Hopefully the words, the Bible, will keep them from being in that reality. Because once you're in there, it's over. Y'all all right? All right, let me get back to my thing. So, Dylan Roof, they bring him inside. They all in a huddle all together. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Swinging backwards and forwards. <laughs> he didn't get searched. He pulls out. I don't know what kind of gun he had. He pulls it out, and before he kills them, did he use these words? Y'all tell me. The Lord told me to kill all you niggas. Did he say that? Nobody knows. Can I look up? I might be wrong. Maybe somebody said that. Maybe I'm adding that in there. Somebody but said, see, you're trying to make Dylan Roof look worse than what he is. <laughs> you shouldn't have said, you got to take that back. He didn't say that. You're trying to make our white people look bad. You up there trying to say he said that. That would mean he's racist. <laughs> did it say, is there any reports that he said anything like that before he killed him? Huh? Anybody look it up. I'll take a few minutes. <laughs> Try to look that up. Did he say anything? What did he say before he killed him? So he got up silently and just bang, 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 bang. Is that what happened? I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. But I, if he didn't say it, that's exactly what his thoughts were. How about that? I think I can get away with that one, right? Hell, there you're trying to, see, you're trying to make it look like he was really about hating y'all. <laughs> so I guess after all that killing, keep in mind the George Floyd now, $20. He ended up dead. This man... And George Floyd said, give me some water. Give some water or something. A lot of, I watched a lot of that trial over the week. Give me some water. He said, my neck hurts. My body, everything hurts. He said, I can't breathe. Dylan Roof gets through killing all those people, and he's hungry. He worked up an appetite. Charleston shooting suspect Dylan Storm Roof got a free meal from police on his way to jail. They went to Burger King. After about 16 hours on the run, the admitted mass murderer complained to cops arresting him in Shelby, North Carolina, that he was hungry, so police got him food from the nearby fast food joint, according to an account of his arrest in the Charlotte Observer. He was very quiet, very calm, Shelby police officer Jeff LaFord told the paper. Roof, a 21-year-old high school dropout from Columbia, was arrested the morning after the massacre at the historic Mother Emanuel AME Church, which left nine worshippers dead. Roof has now been charged for the nine murders he has confessed to from his shooting rampage at a Bible study session.
The latest revelations on his twisted past show he had written a hate-charged manifesto saying he had no choice but to wage bloody war against blacks. He posted it online and last modified it just hours before the shooting. All that sweating for pulling that trigger. All that blood must have been exhausting. I'm hungry. The cops that pick him up, you murdered nine people. George Floyd murdered nobody. End up dead. Murdered. Oh, you, you're you inciting a riot. No, I'm telling the truth. They're going to stop and give this weasel Burger King. I wonder if he paid for it. I wonder who paid for it. I wonder if the police paid for it. Huh? How in the world you bring, you brought him the Burger King and fed his stomach so that he, he felt dehydrated? He was tired. Well, what was George Floyd? Was he di- Was he dehydrated? They that hate you shall rule over you. And there's families that's grieving right now because of those are realities that happen to our people. So we got to get to the cause and the root of that problem. Getting to the cause of it all. Getting to the root of it all. Did y'all find anything? Is there anything on his quotes? What you got? It says, motivation. <laughs> According to a childhood friend, Ruth went on a rant about the shooting of Trayvon Martin and the 2015 Baltimore protest. Mm. They were sparked by the death of Freddie Gray while Gray was in police custody. He also often claimed that blacks were taking over the world. There you go right there. So uh, hey, that's, that's good enough for me. I'll use that. So he stood up in the midst of all, and well, I, what a friend we have in G. So he did that, and he said, you know what? These blacks are taking over the world. I know what he really said in his mind. These niggas. That's what he said. He said, niggas. Bang, 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 bang. Click, ro- reload it. Bang, 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 bang. Nine bullets. Nine people killed. I, th- I think it was more than that. I think he killed nine. We probably had like 15 rounds or something. He meant to kill everybody in there. But I can imagine how to, how, how to, what it, there was some survivors, right? Can you imagine how they felt? They were terrified seeing the, seeing the fire coming out of that gun. And you see the fire coming out the gun, and if it's, fire, if it's coming to you, you ain't seeing nothing else. The minute you see the fire, you don't see no more. So the survivor saw the fire going into sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, the organ player, the tambourine shaker, different people, trauma. And they took his murderers behind, took him to Burger King. You got the quote. Come on with me now. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Don't, don't leave me hanging, man. Lord have mercy. That's what I'm talking about. Come on with it. Uh, it says, according to wit, read it loud. <laughs> according to witness accounts in the Washington Post, he drew his semi-automatic stop, pistol. Stop! Stop! According to traumatized witnesses that were watching the organ st- and the drummer get killed. Go ahead. He drew his sem- semi-automatic pistol and told his victims. Told his victims, listen. You rape our women, and you're taking over our country, and you have to go. Damn. That's what he said. Wow. And they took him to Burger King. They didn't do the George Floyd to him. Have it your way. You want onions on that? How you want it, cheese? No, hold the cheese. Okay, take the cheese off. What kind of drink you want with that? I don't know. I'll think about it. <laughs> Read that again, they that hate you. Yes, sir. Wow. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. 
and I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate you shall rule over you. So I want to reserve the last bit of this particular class with, I'm going to jump down, because next week, next time I go over this, I want to talk about the, the, the example that, that Christ left for us. And that's going to help us look at ourselves as beacons of light and look towards each other as beacons of light and expect greatness and expertise out of each other. And that alone, then I ain't worrying about what the enemy says about us as long as we don't buy that. You all all right? Um, I'm going to make this statement and then I'm going to, because I wanted to read through some things. Uh, like I commented on earlier, I mentioned that uh, Captain Dakar and Officer Eli, and I know all, I heard all, all, uh, Officer Yikiel and the rest of y'all that was in it, so the leadership did an excellent job with a class that y'all brought out today on, on the importance of leadership. That was excellent. Now, I'm not just making reference to me particularly. I'm making reference to all of us that are, that are set up to be that light for our people that are still in darkness, okay? Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I liked what they were making the point of was that, that, that the leadership is to stand in the gap of the people. We're to be the buffer. The enemy is trying to destroy our people, and we are set to stand in the gap, so to speak, to prepare the people. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Let's read that real quick. Give me the Ezekiel, the watchman. That's what, that's what y'all, y'all didn't read that, but this is what y'all were talking about. The watchman stand in the gap for the people. 317. Okay. Book of Ezekiel. Chapter I'm gonna 3. Point some, I'm going to point out some ways. I'm going to point out uh, some things to show how we stand in the gap. You got it? Yes, sir. Read it. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Listen up now. Son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. That's what you was talking about earlier in the class about leadership. The importance of leadership. All you brothers was bringing that out. All y'all was talking about the importance of leadership. The leadership is the watchman. Their job is to watch over the flock. To give the flock what they need to ward off the, the, the wiles of Satan that's trying to kill them. Read. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. So our job is to give you the words of the Most High, which is going to clean you sisters up. Clean you brothers up. There's a chapter in the Bible that I was going to go through, uh, but y'all know about it already. The Titus 2. That one chapter deals with setting the whole nation of Israel in order. It talks about getting the men in order, talks about getting the women in order, and the children. With the understanding of that chapter itself is how you set the whole nation up in order. Leadership is supposed to make certain that that happens. That's a way of standing in the gap for the people. Read. And give them warning from me. So we are to be the watchmen that watch over this nation and give the people the warning from God if they don't take heed to the, to the instructions that God gives in the Bible. Read. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. So if our people don't listen to the, to the leadership that's trying to wake our people up to try to straighten them out, if they don't turn from their wickedness and they die, that, their blood is going to be on their own head. Read. But his blood will I require at thine hand. That blood will he require at our hands if we know the knowledge and we don't give it to them. Read the verse again. When I say unto the wicked. When I say unto the wicked. Thou shalt surely die. Go ahead. And thou givest him not warning. That's the part there. And we know the knowledge. Leadership's responsibility. You got these people in the churches. I use them as an example. They got the Bible. Why are they not giving the people what they need? And they're dying in their sins. Guess who's held accountable? They are. But the worst part about it is that they're not really being held accountable because they don't even know. But us, we know. And if we don't do this, we got that real noose that's going to hang us. The real onus is on us. 
Read. Read that again. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. The wicked is, is our people that's not, the, our people that are still in darkness. That's what it's talking about. Then the dark place that we are supposed to illuminate and light it up with the laws of God. They're the wicked because they're not following God's laws because they're not being taught. Remember the Bible said they are, they are famished and they're dried up with thirst. They don't know. Go ahead. And thou givest him not warning. And you, you got the water to put on the people and you ain't giving it to them to wake them up. Go ahead. Nor speakest to warn the wicked. And we don't tell them of the evil that they're doing, holding back the words of God, doing the work of God deceitfully. Go ahead. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. And we didn't warn him. Go ahead. To save his life. To do what? To save his life. That's what the purpose of us standing in the gap is to save our people's lives. Go ahead. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. The same wicked man shall die in his sins. Listen. But his blood will I require at thine hand. But the blood of that man that died in his sins, because we didn't warn him of his sins, we will pay for that. We will pay for that. Go ahead. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Because we did give the warning, and you decided to leave. You decided to throw a smoke bomb. You decided to walk away from this truth and make up reasons. That's your death. We're not going there, because we told you. We tried to warn you. We tried to guide you. You didn't want to hear that. So that's on you. That's the difference. So one of the ways that we stand in the gap, I'm going to end it with this video here. I'm going to end this part, this part of the series with this vision here, with this video here. Um, my 300 video. Now just hold on. Download it. Make sure it ain't skipping because I want it to play straight through. Make sure you got it downloaded. Don't play it yet. I'm going to set it up. Our job, like I said before, the leadership standing in the gates, standing in the gap, is to give the people instruction to clean them up. I wanted to actually read about something else to show you that the Lord records uh, large amounts of death in terms of killing our people for disobedience. It's written, like the book of Numbers, thousands and thousands, like 25,000 dying all in one day and stuff like that, right? Why did God have those numbers recorded in the Bible? Think about that. Why did he do that? Give me Romans 15 and 4. This is why. I was gonna, this was actually further down, but I said, no, I got to give this to them today. I'm giving, giving this one. Romans, Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. You'll never equate it, this, this scripture with what I'm talking about here. Read it. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. The book of Numbers is aforetime. The book of Exodus is aforetime. Genesis, where the Lord brought judgments, Deuteronomy, when he was killing our people wholesale. All, the, all throughout the Old Testament, when our people were wicked, he killed thousands of us all at once. Why did God have that recorded? Why did he have those numbers? You read about the numbers. And one day, 5,000 fell. And another day, 10,000 fell, 20,000 this. He names the numbers. Why did God have that put in there? Read it. Were written for our learning. There, those numbers were written in there for our learning to let us know that God is not plain. He wants us to understand that I am serious about you keeping my commandments. Look how many people I killed back then. And I put it in your book for your learning, for your acknowledgement, because I'm not plain. Read it again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So the numbers of people killed by God was put in there for our learning. Go ahead. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And if we looked at those numbers and said, you know what? <laughs> this is going to give us some sense. This is going to give us pragmatic sense. Go ahead. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded. So read it again, the top of it again. Verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Now give me the one out of 
Peters, the one about the instructions for reproof and all that. That's what I was thinking of. So I had two scriptures in my mind. Read that. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is yeah, given. That's it. By inspiration of God. This, the scripture is given. The numbers of dead is given. <laughs> Read. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. For reproof. For us to look at those numbers and say, why did God kill so many people? Because of disobedience. Go ahead. For correction. For correction to correct you from the evil that you're about to do to add on to those numbers. For instruction. For instruction to tell us how to walk so that we don't be included in those numbers. In righteousness. In righteousness. So all of that goes together. Can you dig it? All right. Now, so us standing in the gap is to give you that warning to keep you from going into the wrong direction. So we are doing it because we ate the roll. You eating the roll. And as it becomes manifested through your actions, we ought to be that example to our people out there so that they don't add on to these numbers of dead. Okay? So how do we stand in the gap? We set up the programs to help our brothers, to help our sisters, and that's what I'm going to show right now. What I'm about to show you all is what a program that we've been working on for about a year, actually. Um, I'll go into all of the, the way it was set up and all that at another time. But right now, I just want the video to play. It's about a seven-minute video. I just want y'all to watch that as we take it to the top. Hit me. This is us standing in, in the gap. truth of becoming a man, manhood begins when you first and foremost realize who God is. Are you a man? What this is going into is the characteristics of a man, the qualities that a man is supposed to have in, in, in maturing into that being, into that, uh, into adulthood, so to speak, right? Man, it says uh, the quality, state, or degree of being masculine or manly. When you read in the scriptures, you don't read about us being basically um, measured up to how well you could fight. You don't read us being measured up to Oh, how well you can blast somebody. A lot of times people think masculinity is, oh, man, that brother is so, he's so rude. And he, the way he talks, he's just alpha male, alpha male. Pause it. That ain't you notice, so he's basically, what Deacon Abiel is bringing out, because this is in the program, he's making, a, he's making a point that manhood is not measured the way society tells us manhood is measured. They make us think that, that all of that stuff that he was talking about earlier uh, how well you could beat up somebody, curse people out in this. All that represents manhood. That's, that's, that's what media gave you. That's what false media and, and, and uh, popular persuasion has given you. Manipulated media to manipulate our minds. But this is to counteract that. Go ahead. Necessarily masculinity. I will say being authoritative and things of that nature comes with it. But the first place you look for masculinity is the fear that a man has towards God. And I say this, I used to say this in the corporate world. If you have a leader, if you have a manager that has to remind you that he's the manager all the time and that's his only card to play and there's no explanation behind that, then that's not an effective leader. I say that to say, it's not just the words that you say to them and reminding them that you're a God, that you're this, that you're that. You gotta give them the expected behavior. The man, the father, the leader, the protector, you can be at home. You can be physically there, but spiritually you're not there. Spiritually you're not there. And it's very important, brothers, that we engage ourselves with our children. Okay, especially you traveling brothers, you brothers that drive trucks. One of the things I believe in it's not saying I can't, you know what I'm saying? I tell my kids that don't say you, they'll never say you can't. You can do anything you want to do. It's always a way. Can you lift up a car? A lot of people say they can't do that. But I say, yes, I can lift up a car. <laughs> and people look at me and like, bro, you know, damn well you can't lift up no car. Yes, I can. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to use a jack to lift it up. <laughs> no matter how I lift it up, I lift up the car. You, get you the know what I'm saying? The point, point. Yeah, no, I guess he's going to say it. Go ahead. To say, 
is a lot of you brothers, you will defeat yourself in your mind. You know what I'm saying? And men, we don't defeat ourselves in our man. Men, we take on things and we tackle it and we overcome it. You know what I'm saying? We might uh, fall short, but guess what? Like the scripture said, righteous man get uh, fall seven times, but he get back up. We might fall short. We might can't. Uh, we might come. We might get all the way to the finish line, and the obstacle jump in front of us. But guess what? We gonna keep going until we reach the finish line. Today, I challenged all of you to lose your weight, fix your fat gut, grow fruits and vegetables, learn about. It. I don't got all the answers right off the bat. Grow fruits and vegetables, fix your spirit. To, 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 to challenge that, that, that carnal mind that says you got to eat this way, get in shape, fix yourself, fix your health for a strike, a heart attack, or something hits your heart. You do not lose weight in a day. You don't gain 15 pounds of muscle in a day. But every decision that you make to go to the gym is going to compound over time. Every decision you make to not go and spend Eight dollars at Chick Fil A every day is going to lead up to a to forty dollars a week back in your account, which leads up to one hundred and sixty dollars a month off of one decision. Think about years from now, y'all. Ten years from now, twenty years from now, if Christ ain't came back and cracked the sky, what are we going to have established for our children? Is we going to have our own school set up? Is we going to have a hospital set up? Well, where do you stack up? As for us, we're making the change and establishing the vision. Again, I'm not talking about jumping off the cliff and making life-changing decisions tomorrow. What I'm talking about is making one decision, at, changing one decision at a time based on your reclaimed identity as being a good steward in the nation of Israel. All praises to the Father. We are the proof. Shalom, Most High Christ bless. I'm Officer Zadaya out of New Orleans camp. Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Officer Hezekiah here from IUIC Raleigh. Soldier Amiel, Detroit County. I just want to take a minute to tell you about how the 300 Complete Man program has affected me in a positive way and changed my life. So that program, it covers everything. The program covers how to be an entrepreneur, how to uh, be a visionary, how to be a leader, how to be a husband, how to take care of yourself, how to eat, how to exercise, everything that program covers to get our men to where they need to be at in order to take back this kingdom because we're not going to ask for nothing so to lead it the proper way you know uh, some things uh you know the deacons and the captains have brought out even the officers when it was uh edifying us and in these classes it it pin out things that's within you that you didn't even know that was a big deal you know that you might think is light this is what you want to be a leader a ruler and um that 144 hey this one I, I can say right now for this program right here this program is like um the stepping stone it's free they ain't trying to charge you money they trying like bro look we're getting this program together we want y'all fellas to check it out all right first thing i possessed while in the 300 man program was my basic electrical certifications <laughs> Um, I also got my credit up from a lower state and also obtained the wisdom and knowledge of how to actually leave my home. I became a better husband, a better father to my children, a better brother in the, in the body, all right, the way I've been dealing with my brothers. I started growing food in pots, uh, herbs, kale, okra, uh, all of these things, eggplant, all of these things that I never even thought about doing before, but I'm doing now since I've been in this program. I'm getting a CDL in six months, and I'm gonna buy a truck and have my own trucking company in the future. Uh, leadership development, exercising, eating right, all of these things I've never done before. But since I've been in this program, I've started doing it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Officer Jehoshadek, Officer Hezekiah, Officer Elior, and Officer Uriah. Thank you, men, for having a vision. It's changed my life in a positive way. Uh, them doing things that I've never thought about doing or even could believe I could do before. Now, calling all men of the Lord, let's all be complete men. All praise to the Most High. Give the Lord a hand for that thing.
So that's just an example of what it means to stand in the gaps of the people. Give the people the tools. And all of these things that you've seen is biblically inspired. So uh, that's just one of the ways on how we can uh, ward off these negative images and negative statements towards us. It's going to be hard for you to call us a hate group when we are doing the right things that bring our people up on the level of gods and bringing our sisters up on the level of princesses. So that's what I'm interested in. I don't care about what the world has to say. I care about how we deal with each other. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.